So how many of the songs which are in the set now, where, where do they sort of date back to? What's the sort of oldest song you still do? Where were they written along the way? Well, the oldest song of, of these songs are Queen of the World, I think. I wrote it when I was 19, and it was an ironic uh, answer to a, to a producer in Bergen who said that you, you won't ever, ever be able to write a pop song. Because he was gonna, he was, you know, I I can get get you a record deal, but you have to write more proper music. You just write like jazz and punk and like this arty farty shit. And I was like, fuck you, I can like I can write pop music. So um, something like Louis, for instance. When did you write that? I wrote that when I lived in Bergen, and it was you know it was basically just about how how it is being being young and just finished you know hi high school and just going out and you don't really care where you're going you just you have the whole world uh, for, for yourself and and you can do whatever but you don't you don't care about anything really it's just about trying to find a, another couch to sleep on or something like that um, some of the sometimes the character the central character in the record whether it's you or not seems to have got themselves into an awful mess <laughs> on the night before or yeah. at some point. <laughs> exactly. And then, you know, he's trying to sort of put things back together again. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not I'm not a very like um I'm a very impulsive person. I'm so impulsive, you know. I I always just do things and think about things that happen right now. I never think about consequences and I never learn about I'm just like I'm hopeless in in life. I'm hopeless as as a human being because I can't really put like limits anywhere because I I I tend if I put limits I I tend to cr break them with double the double effect or something like that. So I try to just keep out of of trouble. <laughs> and if I if I happen to you know stumble onto some trouble I just enjoy it a bit and then I kind of try and keep that in <laughs> I don't know there's, there's, um, there's, the, there's the real highs and then occasionally there's sort of it's almost like guilt the next day do you know what I mean yeah or a kind of feeling that oh, I'm letting myself down again oh well, yeah hungover <laughs> hungover uh, is that is that uh, would that be like forgive me is that one of those yeah <clears throat> Forgive me is about uh, it's about um, wanting some something so much that you destroy it. You know, you you want something so much, so you just go for it without thinking at all, and then you realize you you find yourself um, in a position where you're actually giving away yourself, and that's uh, I guess m m many of my songs. Uh, is about that because I'm very much like that <laughs> and then of course there's the great irony that the track which shares its name with a brand of beer is the one which isn't about beer <laughs> Stella Stella I won't give you what she says yeah I was thinking of trying to get some sponsor from Stella what do you think <laughs> it's possible yeah. yeah. Don't we can't go out with that information though. Um, tell us about the song then. Stella. Stella is a song that I wrote um, the day before Christmas last last year. This not this Christmas, but last Christmas. And it kind of it basically came in with the Christmas tree. I was like, when the Christmas tree came into the house, I was like, okay, fuck this. This is this is so much bullshit. What was this tree doing here? in the house should be out there <laughs> and it's like it's just basically about well it's it started as a um, reaction to all the christmas shopping and the christmas create the strange tradition traditions of christmas and i started to think why do we take this so seriously why does th why do we take the christmas tree so seriously and why do we take all the traditions so seriously why do we take god so seriously why why are we so serious about this and has any, have anyone ever met god you know i i met a lot of people that said i met god but i haven't i haven't met god like that like a person i want to meet him like a person so um 
I, I wrote this song about God coming down as a person, tired of being God. He's just, yeah, he's got it. And um, and he he meets um, he meets this woman called Stella because because uh, you know I've, I've been, I read a bit of the Bible and uh, Jesus is all about you know prostitutes they are just as much worse than they are just as much welcome in in heaven but it doesn't seem like Christian people always live by that rule in a way so I just uh, wanted to to put black and white up as much as possible. So God seduces Stella, or Stella seduces God, I don't know. They have a wonderful time out, and night out, and she gives him a lap dance, and he enjoys it very much. And, you know. and then it's also just about everyone's need to, to have someone close, you know, not being alone. Because Christmas is very much like that. You're so it's so warm everywhere, but it's actually almost constructed, you know. And um, tell me about um, "Better When You're Naked" because it is it's one of the songs. It looks like you really enjoy it. Well, I hated that song for for quite some time when I had written it. I, actually, I hate all my songs, but then I kind of get friends with them, and then we can hang out a bit. But Better When You're Naked was it was a song I just, you know, just tried to write the stupidest, most simple thing I could come up with, really. The most, um, I don't know, yeah, it's about naked people. It's very banal, and I, <laughs> I love banality. <laughs> um, and it was, yeah, it's a fun song to play. It's a fun song to to watch people sing along to. <laughs> Uh, You've never used that as a chat-up line, then? All the time. I mean, that's the best chat-up line you could ever use. I mean, I like you better when you're naked. What can you say? Nothing. <laughs> and, um, Oh My God? Oh My God used to be a ballad. It was very slow, and it was very... chanting, in a way. It still is a bit chanting, I guess. And It's basically about being stuck in your own head, you know? But waking up, uh, making yourself breakfast and sitting down eating your breakfast but you still can't get these thoughts out of your head. The absolute silence just makes these thoughts go all over and over and over again about who, where, why are you really here and is, is there a point to it all? All these piercing thoughts that some sometimes can turn up in one's head. <laughs> yeah, dealing with the demons over breakfast yeah, gives, that exactly. whole, gives, that, <laughs> gives that whole song a new perspective. Right? <laughs> uh, and you put that out yourself as well, because you, you sort of, you, you put out your own records first. Yeah, I have this small small indie label in, in um, Stockholm. It's called Messner Records, after my hometown. And uh, yeah, basically we just, we released um, two first vinyls, Oh My God and Drive Away My Heart. Uh, yeah, I don't know what to say about that. But why did, why did, why did it, why was it important to you? Or did you do it because no one else wanted to put the record out? Or did you like the idea of being involved? Well, I always kind of had my own kind of like uh, record label, but n didn't really put a name on it, it until recently. So it's like I've been doing all this demo uh, uh, things and sending them out and booking and everything so I basically been doing a lot of things myself and I didn't want to just hand over my songs to anyone and say like do whatever you want it's just my soul and it's you know just chop it up to pieces and sell it cheap <laughs> so I wanted to have I wanted to do it myself so that I could say like this is what I'm about and you can take it from there you know uh, you mentioned uh, how people react to um, like songs better when you're naked and stuff um, y are you in your own sort of little world when you're on stage <laughs> um, yeah it is, it is are, uh, you a are you a different person on stage to the one that's off 